the Lord says to you this morning to tell Nebuchadnezzar to turn up that fiery furnace because it ain't gonna make me but hotter it's gonna make me hotter if you turn it up so raise your hands this morning and say to Nebuchadnezzar turn it up turn it up turn it up turn it up I'm dancing in the furnace I'm dancing with joy in the midst of the fire in Jesus name So you have to be able to discern the anointing of human. Satan has an anointing. Every anointing breaks something. And what happens is once you have rebirth, you start receiving hope, an expectation from God, a hope from God that you can accomplish everything that he is calling you to accomplish, that you can overcome everything you're walking in. And, and then you mature in faith. You start demonstrating power. You start manifesting his glory in you. And then there comes a moment, I hate to tell you this in your life, but it ends here on earth. But if you don't hit number four, you're still going to have an eternal life. And it's going to go on and on and on somewhere. And you want to understand that completely. And this is what Satan loves to do. Show him, Brian. He has got to knock your hope out. He knows once you have been reborn that you have the ability to destroy him. Therefore, and he knows you have the ability to create an expectation, now hear me carefully, in your desire function of your emotion that will cause you to walk in victory. And with that, some way or another, he has got to watch when you have an expectation in God, and he's got to hit it some way. He does not play fair. And yet, when he hits, if you have God living in you, he's going to give you how to hit back. Now look at somebody and say, you need to be a heavy hitter this season. Woo. Come on. Now, 
Last Sunday, we looked at the subject of covenant. It's the, the most important thing you can do to walk in God's blessing is to walk in covenant. Because our God is a covenant God. Everything God does is based on covenant. You know, the Bible is a book of covenant. The Old Testament, what that really means is the Old Covenant. The New Testament is the New Covenant. All of God's blessings are given on the basis of covenant. So what is covenant? A covenant is a solemn and binding commitment between two or more parties. It is a pledge of total loyalty and total commitment to another individual. It goes beyond any other commitment. It is more sacred than life itself. It's, it is an endless partnership. It cannot be broken under penalty of death. And as we saw last week, when you received Jesus, he brought you into a covenant with God. And God wants us to walk in covenant with him, and he wants us to be faithful in walking out our covenants with each other. Now, covenants were very common in biblical times, but most Christians today don't understand covenant. We live in a society that doesn't understand covenant. About the only kind of covenant we have today is the covenant of marriage, and most people don't understand what that means. And not understanding covenant leads to problems. Because they've never been taught about covenant, many people are in a mess and don't know how to get out. And then when they do begin to understand covenant, things can seem even worse. Because many people look at their lives and realize they have already broken covenants. And if you understand the seriousness of that, it's sort of easy to feel hopeless. You know, what hope is there for me? Uh, where do I go from here? This last week, somebody, after the message last Sunday, somebody asked me this week, is there anywhere to, any way to repair a broken covenant? And the answer is yes. If you realize you have broken a covenant, God has some good news for you. Even though breaking a covenant is a serious thing, God has a path to restoration.